I call the meeting to order. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meeting of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Cedar Grove Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be advertised by having the date, time, and place thereof posted on bulletin boards in the district, published and are transmitted to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and Star Ledger newspapers, tap into online news, file with the township clerk, and post it on the district's website. Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Here. Mrs. Miga. Here. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Here. Mrs. Dye. Here. The meeting is open to the public for comment on items on the agenda. Seeing none, good evening. Good evening. It's a full house good tonight. Full yes. house. Every seat is being Every used. Every seat is being used. Every seat. That's because none of these people want to go do their exams tomorrow. So yes, we'll yeah. like tonight. Yes. Lots going on, so we'll get to it, right? Right. Okay. Uh, committee reports. Anybody have anything to talk about? Yes. Um, was it last week or two weeks ago? The senior um, uh, scholarship uh, assembly or awards program that was held was wonderful. There was $106,000 in scholarships given out from our local community and it's just a great night to see uh, Cedar Grove support the kids of Cedar Grove so it was really nice and congratulations to everyone who received a scholarship very nice I just have um, a reminder if anybody wants to go to the Jackals game that's a fundraiser being run by the middle school and the two elementary schools their FSAs um, the game is June 22nd and you can buy tickets with your FSA all right. Uh, I attended the FSA meeting at the middle school last week. Uh, Mr. DeCourt was pretty much uh, rounding out the, the rest of the school year, um, talked about Health and Wellness Day, talked about um, seventh grade um, career day, um, the FSA board. Uh, we have a brand new FSA board, and I didn't write down all their names, so we'll see them in September. <laughs> We're excited for them. Um, graduation for the middle school is Thursday. And graduation at the high school is Friday. Yeah. And it's not going to rain on Friday. Mr. Featherman is nope. going to make sure. He promised, he promised no me on, we're going to have it on the, uh, on the field, right? Ooh. Promise is a promise. <laughs> All right. All righty. Oh, and also, I attended the color run. Oh, yes. The, the did South you? End color run. And it was a lot was of fun. That? You know, you run around like a nut and they throw color at you. And if only more people knew you were running. I was running. I know. I have a lot more color. Absolutely. At me. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you for attending. You're welcome. All righty. Moving on, because we have a few presentations. Um, the first one is the recognition of Maria Zafina. And who will be? Mr. Cardiello. Okay, Mr. Cardiello. Good evening. How are you? Do I need this? Probably not. Good evening. And I'm glad to see that there is a lot of uh, students here from the high school. I was asked to say a few words about a very special person. A person who has devoted 42 years to making people happy through her food. In the high school, she is fondly referred to as Mama. Mama wakes up every morning during the school year with the sole purpose of making the students in Cedar Grove High School feel loved through the food that she makes. Mama makes us her own handmade galzones and her special meatballs. And when she makes us sausage and peppers, it has to be a certain brand of sausage. So Mama walks to the shop right in Little Falls, <clears throat> buys the brand that she likes, and then brings it to the school. So lunch would be up to her standards. 
vegetables in the store aren't fresh enough for mom. So she grows her own. She grows tomatoes, basil, parsley, rosemary, cucumbers, and my personal favorite, cucuzza. <laughs> for you non-Italians out there, cucuzza is a long squash and it grows about three to four feet in length. She uses her fresh herbs and vegetables in our soups and salads. Yes, we are treated very special every day at the high school. So tonight, it's mama's turn to get that special attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in honoring a very special mom, Maria Sabina. her food do the talking. <laughs> and this cookie, she made three batches of oh. cookies. Oh, that's so sweet. So we wanted to put a nice picture together for Maria, for Mama, for something she can have at home. And you certainly cook with love, and we wanted to express some of that to you. So thank you, Shane. Yay! Well, Mr. Gogarty, I don't know how you're going to follow that one up. <laughs> Good luck. What do you got to eat? <laughs> did did you bring you cookies? Uh, <laughs> these girls just proved that. No. Yeah. Um, every, um, towards the end of every season, I like to acknowledge our championship teams in front of the board. Um, and, and this year, this is the first time I'm here. So I thank these uh, girls in this room for kind of making that happen this spring. I want to start off with our girls lacrosse championship team um, who this year won the NJI GLL Colonial South Division Championship with a record of 7-0 and in the division. Um, they were 17-3 they were seventeen and three for the year and just in, in their third year of, of RC program just the strides and the steps they're taking are, are just enormous um, and, and, and a lot of it's because of the players in this room, their commitment, their hard work, the coaching staff who's here tonight. Um, they also went five and one in an SEC Liberty Division where they didn't win a game the past two years and they were about you know two goals short of winning that division um, as well. Every year I think this team gets something thrown at them, whether it's you know some adversity with injuries and some missed players being a new team, um, and next year they're going to be bumped up in both divisions, so they're going to be playing at the highest level of competition with, within our county and definitely certainly around the state. Um, and, and I think they have the core group of players and coaches to kind of take that head on. So, so I just want to con congratulate these girls on a fa fantastic season. I'm going to call up Coach Sweeney just to present his um, Colonial South Championship team to the Board of Ed. Taylor 
Louis St. Laurent. <laughs> Jessica Green. <laughs> Molly Bauer. <laughs> Abby Fedley. <laughs> Nina Gannett. Louis St. Laurent, <laughs> Ellie Dye, <laughs> Candice Lagatuda, <laughs> Juliana Machochi, <laughs> Kathy Kachanowski, <laughs> Kaylin Downs. Gina Grimes, <laughs> Kayla Gilano, <laughs> Kathy Pacho, <laughs> Devin Tutella, <laughs> Nico Nebulos, <laughs> Micah Gifelli. Gianna Anastasi, <laughs> Miriam Tazit, <laughs> Ari Carpenter, <laughs> Julia Albanese, Aaron <laughs> <Mary> Burke, <laughs> Alexa Mandrew, <laughs> Alyssa Faziola. Taylor Clean, <laughs> Carly Bobrowski, Now I'm going to move on to our softball team, um, and and really just where where can I start? Um, I think, um, in my opinion, probably the best team to kind of ever come through Cedar Grove. Um, I think the acknowledgments. I think I could go on and on and on here. Um, just to start out with a few things: Super Essex Conference American Division champions for the second year in a row. Um, being very close to softball, I'm the athletic director in charge of our Super S's Conference softball sport. Um, I know how good of a division it is. There was five teams in that division to make it to the sectional finals. Um, and, and for us to be at the top of that is, is, is just outstanding. Um, North won group one state champions for the third straight year. Um, people think that that just happens like that, but but it really takes a team and, 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 and a special group of athletes to, to keep getting that done. Um, group one state champions for the second time in three years. Um, they were 27 and five for the year.
they were undefeated against public schools in the state of New Jersey. Um, and, and, and they finished the NJ.com state rankings as the fourth best team in the entire state, um, the top public school team in the state. Um, it's all about the players. It's all about the coaches. I think, you know, I've watched the team closely. I think they have a special bond, a special work ethic. Um, the coaches push them, um, and they dedicate themselves to it. Um, and, and I think a quick story to sum that up, Memorial Day weekend, I'm driving around. I think I'm going out for lunch. I just drive by Panther Park, and I see them practicing. Um, it's Sunday, Memorial Day. Everyone's kind of away and down the shore and doing their thing. And, and, and I'm like, that's the commitment and, and kind of special bond it takes to reach these heights sometimes. It doesn't always work out. And, and I remember saying to myself, I hope it pans out. I hope, I kind of hope they get what they're working for. And um, four straight dominant wins later, we're standing in, uh, we're, we're, we're at Seton Hall University playing in the tournament champion final in front of a great turnout. Uh, Cedar Grove sh should be proud of that turned out I had a ton of people from the state come up to me and say, your town came out, your town supported these girls, and I think it's a testament to these girls and these coaches to kind of get that to, to, to really happen. Um, I don't like to kind of single people out, but Mia, awesome, awesome <laughs> job. Uh, Again, a thousand, a thousand strikeouts and wins against all these teams. I can go on and on, but, but I think it's worth uh, mentioning. I want to call Coach Velarde up here to present her um, championship softball team. Gianna Bacchino. Mia Fayetta. Alicia Coletta, Gianna Cabu, Brittany Taylor, Chloe Weinstein, Ryan Canatero. Maria Kelly, Paige Lemongello, Katie Peterson, Anna Chakowski, Kiki Grande, Mia Nardiello. Uh, Coach Eddie Capazzi, Coach Pete Velarde. As much as I know you want to stay here and watch me read off 42 pages on the agenda, uh, I think you all have things to do this evening to prepare for tomorrow, so we're going to take a two-minute break, and you can feel free to go. So we'll adjourn for
All right, I call the meeting back to order, and I know we were going to talk about the Globetrotters, but we're just going to backtrack um, just a second because Nick Splendoria, our high school rec, has uh, managed to finish his exam, and he's here, so he'd like to give us his final update, actually. And I heard you did a uh, you did okay that night. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so the drama and the music finals they're a little different. So we get to do performances. So for the music theory class, we got to write songs and we perform them in class today. That's become an annual tradition. For our drama final, we just put on two shows. I directed one of them. It's called Actors Nightmare. And then um, Francesca Catalano directed another one called Competition Piece. So we got, it was a lot of fun. We got to give students an opportunity to direct. <coughs> and then tomorrow is the select choir and concert choir cabaret at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. And that's, it's following the It Takes Two theme for the year. There's a lot of duets, solos, so it, it's nice to go out. And then our all school council elections, Frankie Catron will be our new president next year. It was different this year, it was a school-wide election. So um, congratulations to her, and I know she'll, she'll have a lot of fun doing this next year. And then, Graduation is this Friday, so I think that's all. Graduation at 6.30 at the high school. And it's not going to rain. And it's not going to rain. 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 We've been checking every day, so. As have I. You're following through with your promise. Thanks, Nick. No pressure. You don't have any, right? None. All right. Thank you. Uh, and let me just say, yeah, not yet, hold on. Let me just say, <laughs> oh my God. we have really, really enjoyed you being here this past year. I mean, I've been on the board now a long time, and uh, we have to say that you've definitely been uh, one of our, um, what's the word I'm looking for, without insulting other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've always looked forward we to We really hearing. enjoyed Thank you coming. You, you yeah. did a really good job. We enjoyed having you. You, you definitely participated in the, in the conversation. Thank so, you. It's been, Thank you. It's been an honor to do this. It's been really great. So. And, and you, well, you always give us this great level of keeping us on, because there's so much going on in the district, school-wise, you always kind of keep us on track on what's going on all the time. Even Thank more you. than Mr. Schoner does. So <laughs> <job>. <laughs> and that's tough. <laughs> yeah, that is hard to do, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, best of luck to you. Good luck. You know, we know you'll go do great things. Thank you. So, absolutely. <laughs> And now Mr. Cannell is going to get up and talk to us about the Globetrotters. Sorry, I stole his thunder. It's all good. Uh, He's got plenty. It's all good. That's fine. Um, well, congratulations to the girls that all left. Um, congratulations to Mama Maria. I obviously, obviously, I don't miss too many of her meals. Um, so I'm going to, uh, a quick presentation, because we haven't done so, show, show you where, where we've been this year. We had a great trip this year to uh, uh, Berlin, Krakow, Budapest, Prague. Um, we got a bonus country in there. We went to Sl Slovakia. So quick little slow uh, show. We started in Berlin. It's a map of Berlin. Some of the great food, not as good as Mama Maria's, but some good food from, uh, from Germany. Okay, a couple of our students downtown central Berlin, um, right by the universities. Okay, this is a square. This was one of the... Um, Square, this was the square where the book burning during the Nazi time took place. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, there's a monument um, underneath. If you look down, there's an empty um, library, uh, like a monument to those books that were burnt during the Nazi era. Um, uh, you see in the background, uh, obviously you see the great kids, um, but you see in the background, you see uh, pieces of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, We were right in the area of where Checkpoint Charlie was, and that was obviously the uh, point where you went from the communist side, uh, controlled side to the uh, United States controlled side of Berlin. Okay, this is the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin. Um, it's kind of like a maze. Uh, I think they said there were something about 1,200 of these pylons and it has no significant meaning. They were all different sizes, different, different, um, uh, uh, what do you call, I guess, heights and you walk through it and it really didn't have a, uh, they, they said it was kind of meant to be op interpreted by the people that went and you could walk through them like, like, uh, like a maze, it was amazing. 
Um, this is the Brandenburg Gate, okay? And we're still in Berlin. Uh, now we move over to Dresden. We did a quick one-day trip in Dresden. Um, beautiful palaces there. Obviously, Dresden was mostly destroyed uh, during World War II by the United States, okay? Um, again, in, in the courtyard in Dresden. Um, this was one of my favorite visits. This is Potsdam. So this is where the Potsdam Conference was, um, where the big three uh, met after World War II to decide the fate of the world. And you see the picture of the leaders from the Soviet Union from um, the United States and from Great Britain kind of deciding how the world was going to play out. So our students got to be in the same room that these great leaders were. Um, and this was the office in the Potsdam Palace where uh, uh, President Truman had his office. So the kids got to see all three offices, uh, Stalin's office, Churchill's office, and Truman's office. Okay, and that's again outside the palace. We like the group photos, try to get everybody in there. Um, this is Warsaw, the palace in Wars Warsaw. Be best pierogies, by the way, ever, <laughs> definitely best. So uh, again, uh, some of the palace the courtyard on top of the hill in the palace, okay? Um, this is the monument in, in the Krakow, where the Krakow ghetto was during the Holocaust. Any of you watch Schindler's List, where they, where they first moved all of the Jews into Krakow into this area, into the ghetto, and that's the memorial, and right behind are some of the buildings, only a couple of them remain, that were originally there during that time. Okay, this is Os Oscar Schindler's factory. Um, so I, I wanted to visit there because we know dur during our, in our curriculum, we, uh, during the junior year, we watched Schindler's List, and I thought it was great to visit that site to show the kids where, um, you know, those workers worked for him and he protected them, okay? Uh, this is one of the main squares in Krakow. Um, I only chose two pictures of this next one, and this was um, the concentration camp um, Auschwitz-Birkenau. So, because you know, it's very emotional, the kids really, I'm so proud of the, of the students that were there because they represented the town, the school, they represented us perfectly as we saw these sites and that's the gate as you, uh, work will free you, that's what that says in Germany, okay? Um, and that's the original camp and this is the train station into the larger camp. And again, I didn't want to show a lot of pictures because it's just, you know, very emotional. Um, and it was very emotional and, and you know, just a, a place that you remember, you're going to remember being there forever. Um, this is Prague, and that's the famous bridge that crosses over Prague. You see the second bridge over. Um, kids taking good pictures on the river. Um, some of the, in the square, and I believe we spent Easter in this particular square, and, and they had a nice Easter market and some good food. Um, this is one of the main churches that we visited. Um, that was a tomb to one of the, uh, uh, I guess, the emperors who were there a couple hundred years ago. Um, this was in Slovakia, and I don't remember the name of the town because it was very hard to pronounce, but we didn't know we were going there, and, and the tour director said, hey, you want to stop for lunch in Slovakia and get another country in? And I was like, sure. I'll never probably be here again. So we had lunch in this square. It was a beautiful little square. Okay, kids taking another group photo. Um, now we are in Budapest, okay? And Budapest is my favorite city in the world. I've been there twice now with Cedar Grove High School. I haven't been there w without kids, so I have to get there without kids so I can, you know, yeah. So, um, again, some of the kids having fun with one of the statues, okay? Some of the great food there. The view from the, from the palace down to Budapest. Uh, the opposite side is Buddha, the side that we're on is Pest, Budapest, okay, and a couple of our kids. Um, the main square, monument, war monument, uh, I believe it's World War I. Okay, so where are we going next? All right, so in a year and a, about a, year and a half, we're going to be going to Japan, okay, and we're, doing, we're, we're pushing it back because we want to be able to give people uh, opportunity to save money. We have a few other trips that are going on with some other clubs next year. So um, we'll be using EF Tours again. We like, we like their program. They're very easy. They have a lot of support, um, a lot of experience. This will be our sixth trip with them, uh, the Globetrotters. Uh, we've been to almost every continent. Okay. 
Um, they give us a lot of support, a lot of services. And again, I'm not going to read all of this because we you know, have a long agenda. But the board was given this in a packet. Um, and anybody that has questions about this, we, we're not going to present this trip until September. We just wanted to be able to get this in before the school year ended so we could start recruiting people and give them a year and a half to, to you know, uh, pay for the trip. Okay. Um, uh, EF has awesome insurance. They, they, they cover the teachers. They cover the, the students. They also, um, we make the students buy uh, travel insurance, which is, which is part of the price that's included. Um, that's the protection plan I just talked about. Okay. Um, again, safety, 20, we have a tour guide that's with us the whole time. The places that they go are vetted and, and, and safe and secure. Um, peace of mind policy, if, any, if the place we're going is not safe, they, give, they put us on a different trip. Okay. Um, so what are we going to see? You see we'll be flying into Tokyo. Um, and I, again, they're very small. So these, these are the places we'll be seeing. Tokyo, Hokone, Atawara, Kyoto, and we'll be visiting these cities on this trip. Okay, um, these are some of the hi uh, highlights of the trip, some of the landmarks that we'll be seeing. Okay, and the total price is going to be forty-five twenty-five. That price right now is only if we have a uh, that if we get twenty ki fifteen to twenty kids. If we get more kids or more paid people, it'll be a lot, it'll be cheaper to go down to several hundred dollars. And this is for a private tour, so we're not with the other groups. And that's all. Any questions? Yeah. Can freshmen go? <laughs> Pardon me. How long is the flight again? Um, the flight to Beijing was 13 hours. This is a little shorter if we go direct. So I think it's probably about 12 and a half hours. Okay. You know, we've done that before in Beijing. We didn't have a problem. Actually, the, the longer flight was, was nicer because the kids slept longer. Mm. And is this, for, is this the summer of 2021? No, spring break? break. Yeah. So you know, I know that there's, there's a bunch of trips being planned that are probably going to come to you for next year. The Italian club is doing a trip, uh, and there may be another trip coming up. So that's why we wanted to put it off. And so we decided to choose something a little nicer uh, because we're going to have some time to get, recruit people and give them time to pay it off. Right. No, it's just a shame because I know every other year you were doing it in the summer. And so it's just a shame that kids have to choose between staying mm. on a sports team or, or going to Japan. So that's why I was asking. Mm. OK. And it's open to every, like all? Yes, the, the Globetrotters is, open, is an open trip. As long as you meet certain criteria, you know, yeah. uh, decent behavior, yeah. Uh, good grades, obviously. Okay. Is that all? Yep. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And we're moving on. All right, next oh up is strate the strategic planning project update. We've been doing this now for a year-ish, yes. right? Yeah. Over. Okay, over a year, over I think. We're ready right? to unveil the suspense. Right. Ooh, suspense. I think it's over. Ooh. Ooh. I might be. Time flies. I'm still wondering what 13 years is worth, so. though. <laughs> is the wireless remote uh, there, Angel? Or? Uh, I think so. I could be wrong. We'll see. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> That's a heck of a greeting. Good evening. Good evening. Thank hey. you, thank you. So um, my name is Dr. Tracy Severs, and I am here to talk with you about the strategic planning process that um, we have been collectively undergoing here in Cedar Grove for the past several months. So I did this work alongside Rob Zwicky through the Rutgers Center for Effective School Practices. So uh, we're talking about the work of doing strategic planning, which of course is a team effort. We need to make sure that we have everyone on board in order to, to move a district forward. This is important work, and it's, in, it's critical that we elicit the voices of all of our participants. So um, as a process, the strategic planning process really begins by saying, well, where are we now? What is our current state in the district? 
Um, there was a survey, that's the link to the survey that went out to the entire community. Then we create the roadmap for the future. Where do we want to go? And set goals that increase the likelihood of getting there. So the process is really this. This comes from Bernhardt's research, where we first take a look at the data. We collect the data, both qualitative and quantitative. That means we look at the numerical kind of data, the outcome data, as well as the qualitative data, which came in the form of the voices, the input of the students, the staff, uh, and the community. And we analyze those results, validate, interpret, and use those to set our goals. So the driving questions that are used as the framework for the strategic pro pro um, planning process are these. First, well, where are we now? Um, how did we get here? Where do we choose to go? How will we get there? And how are the things that we're doing now moving us toward that intended do destination? So the process involved several steps. Uh, back in, I believe it was, let's see, October, Dr. Zwicky was here, and I believe he spoke with the board and talked with the community about the process. Then the needs assessment and the survey tool were finalized, and then I came in November and started the really fun stuff, which was meeting with the community and the board to gather input on what you see as the district's strengths, the opportunities, the potential threats, meaning the challenges that you're facing, so that we could comprise all of this data and use it to set a bright future. Uh, after I met with the community members in November, I came back in December and went to uh, this school, North End and South End. I met with students um, as young as third and fourth grade and talked with them about what they value in their district in the schools currently and what they would like to see for themselves in the future. Then I went to the middle school and I went to the high school. At every location I spoke with students, uh, representatives, as well as the faculty. Uh, the survey was then sent out to the entire community. The results were aggregated, analyzed, and will be shared with you here this evening. A strategic plan draft was then proposed, shared with the superintendent, and that will form the basis of where you set a, de a direction for the future. So here's what we heard when it came to um, assessing this, the success of the current plan. So first, uh, we sent the survey out, as I mentioned, and approximately 99 people responded. A fourth were students, approximately a third were parents, and less than a half, just shy of a half, were, uh, were teachers. We had four community members and one administrator. So that was the distribution of respondents. What I'm going to show you now are histograms that represent the feedback on a Likert scale from strongly disagree to agree in relation to how do you think you did collectively on the goals that you had previously. So the results are here. So when it comes to the, um, the community and, uh, co excuse me, community and, and uh, communication goals, what I like to do is aggregate the data that you have at the left end, which is the strongly disagree, disagree, and the agree and strongly agree, because what the center represents are people who were neutral, who said, I don't know enough to uh, to advance an opinion. So when we look at the first goal, the way that it kind of adds up is that you had 8% who agreed, who strongly disagreed or disagreed um, with the um, success of the goal, and you had 56% who said, yeah, we did it well. When it comes to curriculum goals, the split was about 11% who disagreed and 48% agreed. When it came to the character education goals, this was the, the one that was split about most evenly. About approximately 32% disagreed and 36% agreed. When it came to the college and career readiness, 23% disagreed and 34% agreed. What struck me when I looked at the data for each of them is the height of that central bar that said, we don't really know enough. And so I think if there was some feedback that what I that I would wish to offer is the importance of really working to push the message of the successes here. There's so much to be proud of, as I saw just even this evening, um, and yet some people just don't seem to know or didn't feel comfortable enough to offer an opinion. 
So next, we asked people, well, in looking at the goals that we had last time, what would you like to see addressed next time? And there are some themes that kind of came up in the data. First, people recognize that we're living now in a changing cultural context. There were people who said we need more efforts in the area of diversity, that we recognize that there are global issues. We know that students also need um, attention toward their social and emotional goals as well. We heard some requests for more curricular op options, things like choice and challenge, and options for the non-college graduates, high school graduates, um, as well as real life, preparation for the challenges that we face in the day to day. When we asked people, um, what are you proud of? Where were the successes? There was some recognition that the district is moving forward. Overwhelmingly, the overall opinion was acknowledgement for forward motion here in, in Cedar Grove. In terms of what specifically people were proud of, their responses centered in the areas of communication, curriculum, character, college readiness, and technology. In terms of looking at the, the specific um, strengths or what are you most proud of? Um, oh, excuse me, the biggest challenges, I apologize, the biggest challenges, there was recognition that in some ways the small size of the district presents challenges when it comes to funding, offering options, um, various curricular choices, that security and technology is an ongoing challenge to stay on top of that. Now, oops, now when it comes to the issues of pride, what, do you, what are you proud of? Um, there were overwhelmingly, people mentioned the staff, the teachers, the administrators, and the staff. And just, again, as someone who doesn't live in the community, but re would just reflect the level of participation and pride here this evening, it's not hard to see why that's the case. Uh, parental involvement, the technology, programs, um, there's strong acknowledgement, that, again, that that Cedar Grove is refining the program offerings for the students and that it's connecting. So the pride centered around uh, personnel, a parents, and a positive climate. When asked what some of those specifics include, these were some of the areas that people listed. There were 13 examples of initiatives that have taken hold and that people were proud of, that they were able to point to and say, these are things that exist now that didn't in the past and we wish to recognize these as evidence of our advancement. When it comes to analysis of the goal areas then, um, overall, when you just synthesize all of the response, the feedback was mixed in some areas. And in some ways, that's really not surprising. People are going to look at the goals, look at the experience here through various lenses. So the feedback overall was positive, and there were responses that varied from, I believe all of the goals were met, to none of the goals were met. And again, I think that depends largely on the people's perspective. There was no clear, overwhelming patterns, um, but in general, um, people said that they are proud, as I said, that you are moving forward, and that there's a great deal to be um, excited about in the future. So what we heard when it comes to community and faculty sessions. This is a picture from one of the faculty sessions where we did an interview design. And we used that design with all of the faculty and the community because we wanted to make sure that everyone attended was heard. So the deliberate design was set up to really elicit every single voice. So what you do in the process is you ask people from your perspective, what do you see as the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threat. And so when it comes to the strengths, again, they aggregated around some big themes that have to do with the people here, the people who work here, uh, the parents, the programs, the resources, the fact that you are now acknowledged as being future ready, and there has been great pride and um, progress in all of these areas. When it came to the weaknesses, the list may look longer, but they really group around certain themes. What people have said from their perception is they want to see more efforts in the process areas, like communication and collaboration, cohesiveness across the schools. Um, there's some interest in looking at the programs and using them to achieve 
even higher results, greater levels of achievement for all of the students. There was some mention of facilities and some of the societal challenges that you face when it comes to social media, um, the threat of drugs, of um, alcohol, all of the distractions that are out there and that can sometimes cause our students to, to look away from their goals. Um, we heard today great celebrations of athletes and the academicians also, um, I think, need to, of course, stay focused on the goals and what they're here to achieve. So in terms of the opportunities, what you would notice is what people named as weaknesses or concerns are present here in the opportunities. People are saying, well, we could communicate more. We could work more on our continuity. We could work to build relationships, to expand our efforts in STEAM and in STEM and, and in technology and, and dual enrollment, other opportunities that would expand our, our college and career readiness for our students. In terms of threats, again, it came down to things that tend to stem from um, funding sources, from the size of the district, um, resistance to change on some levels, and a lack of time to do all the work that needs to be done. It's a huge effort to lead an ambitious school district, and there's a recognition that this is a challenge, really, on, on every level. So what we heard from the students, I want to begin by just commending the board and the district for their commitment to listening to the students. I felt very strongly that, um, that we can't talk seriously about engaging in a strategic planning process if we don't talk to the primary customer. The client in any school, as I see it, are students. Are they happy? Do they feel known? Do they feel noticed? Are they engaged? And so in talking with the students, I just want to show you. What I did is I brought forms that look like this, had a little heart and a brain, learn to speak. And, um, and I brought it to the elementary schools. And what I said to them, to the students, is I believe that a great school has two things. It has heart, where there's a place where everyone feels known and noticed and valued and cared about, and where, where teachers teach so kids can learn. And what I asked of the students is, so tell us, what recommendations would you make so that this becomes a school of heart, connection, strong relationships, and where students are learning at their greatest potential? And they answered, as students always will. And you know, some folks might think that the younger students might not have much to contribute. They were very articulate. They were very clear. And so, um, then when I went to the middle school, you know, you can't bring a brain wearing sneakers to the middle school. You have to cool it up. So I cooled it up and I went to the middle school and to the high school. And I took all of those student voices. Now, while the words that they used might have been different, but there were themes that ran through their messages. So when it comes to communication and interaction, what the students are saying is we want to talk to each other. We want to be active. We want to be engaged. We, we want to do this work together. We want to know that, that, that we can work individually when we wish. We can work with a partner when we want. And we know how to partner or, or um, work alongside a whole group to engage in meaningful projects. Kids said that we want to welcome new students. We'd like to see buddies. We'd like to see older kids looking out for younger kids and be really deliberate about fostering the kinds of connections and relationships that make schools feel warm and cause you to feel missed when you're not there. When it came to instruction, what kids said is, we want to do things. We want to touch it. We want to feel it. We want to engage in a hands-on way in um, challenging rigorous, relevant learning experiences. What they said is we want to know that what we're being asked to do is meaningful. Kids said that they want more influence in terms of when, how, what, and with whom they learn. What I heard from students overall is that they are invested in their education and they want it to be great. So there is a certain restlessness at times among students who want to lean in differently who want to work alongside their, their, um, their peers and engage in things that they see as making a difference in the world. They truly want to make an impact. It was interesting to see some students say we want more computers and some students say we want more books. 
So that all students experience learning differently. So the idea of personalizing the learning experience is one that I think you will see manifest then in one of the goals, which again is tying back to the voices that were heard as we work through this process. When it came to the personal, you know, you as a learner, look what kids said. We want to experience more fun, more joy, more of a sense of connection. We want celebrations and events. There really is a sense that, that you know, learning has a pulse. It should excite me, and I want to experience that in the classroom. So in terms of the roadmap for the future, in terms of developing the new strategies, what we do is we, we listen to all of the things. We look for the common themes. We do a content analysis and triangulate all of those sources and look to see what rises up from the data. What are people saying is the direction in which we seek to go, and establish five strategic goals that will then be supported by a three-year plan. I think it's important to stay nimble. We recognize that the times are changing, and so a three-year plan makes sense to me. In the past, we've done five-year plans. I think a three-year plan is wise. And so the next steps, then, will be to put some metrics around that, have an action plan that, that again, propels the district forward to where you wish to be. And what I will say as a visitor and as a participant, as a witness to um, the work that's being done here is there is so much to be proud of and I encourage you uh, to move boldly forward in that process and to see where that may lead you. There's a lot of wonderful and exciting things happening, great people who care about the work very deeply. Um, I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of the process. It was a great honor. And what I'd like to do now is to pass the process over to uh, Mr. Featherman, who's going to talk about where next. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Severns, for so much. For, for, for starters, for orienting the district towards a new direction. As you know, we do these board meetings regularly and we talk about our progress and we have reports and we push out uh, data. But I think we're most proud, I am most proud of the work that you have done, Dr. Severns, with our students. You know, leaning in and listening to what they have to say about the work we do every day here means the most to us. So I think you'll see that the themes, the wants and the needs, the aspirations that we've identified here are embedded within the five goals I will present to you now. You've all heard of our Future Ready Initiative. The seven gears embedded in curriculum, the use of space, robust infrastructure, and so forth. But all that means it's about personalized learning. That's what all that means. It's about you, the learner. It's about the educator who needs to take the time to listen to student voice and choice and to personalize instruction for each of those learners in the room. Isn't that what it's about? It's not about us, it's about you, each of you. And so this first goal, institutionalizing personalized learning for all learners is critical. And what we will do in the future, this summer, effectually, is build our SMART goals around goal number one. Goal number two talks about social and emotional learning. You know, we've listened, we're listening, we hear you. Now throughout this year, you've also heard myself, the board, administrators, teachers, talk with you about the needs assessment, the ongoing needs assessment we've done all of this year. We've heard, we've hired a, a social worker that meets with students in all grade levels, personally and in small groups, to essentially provide us, me, the board, with a needs assessment. So this work has been going on all year. So this goal we felt was essential to being one of the five. It means so much to us that each of you as students, I need my glasses, I can't even read my notes, how terrible is that, my goodness. That each of you is able to recognize your own feelings. I know that's, <laughs> no, that's hard. I have a 16 year old and a 13 year old at home. We're dealing with that all the time. It's not just your own feelings, right? It's the feelings of those around you it's helping you, helping us adults recognize 
how to problem solve, and how to build healthy relationships. So that's what goal number two is about, social and emotional learning. Number three does center around the staff. It's about us, myself, the administrative team, Mr. Canella's colleagues, the board, recruiting, developing, training, and retaining the most highly qualified staff. It speaks for itself. We need to hire the best people, we need to inform the best people, grow the best people, so that we can achieve goals one and two. Research shows yet again, this study done in 2018, that of all these things, that of all these uh, statistics that we measure in the classroom, what has the most impactful, the most impactful result on student growth? Teacher efficacy. Good teachers. That's what makes the difference. Yes, yeah, small class size, you can read that list, effort, right, attention to detail. It's the teacher in the classroom that is able to deliver content to you, the learner, in ways that help you learn. That's what it's about. Goal number four, we are going to operate, we're gonna to continue to operate with innovation, compliance, and transparency. We talked about being nimble. We're gonna be more nimble. We're gonna bring in new technologies, new pedagogies. We're gonna create, we have created, new learning spaces. Come by our school sometime. I know I see a lot of you in there. There's some really cool things going on. It's not happening in a vacuum. We're listening to you. We're trying to be more nimble. We want to respond to what a 21st century learner's needs are. And we think we're on the right track. That's goal number four. And our fifth and final goal is to continue to embrace what I hope to some degree each of you have experienced this year. Our branded initiative, our social media initiative. Quick show of hands. Have, have, are you following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Are you following myself or members of the board, your teaching staff, your coaches? Are any of you doing that? Mr. Mangilli, Mr. DeCourt, show of hands. Yeah, come on, if you're not, follow them, follow us. I do, I follow them. Come on now, I need more followers. Mr. Mangilli's beat me like a dog. He's got more followers than I do. Mr. Gogarty, how many followers do you have? The most out of anyone, which is so cool. And why is that so cool? Because if you're following us through the mediums that, that I know you love, social media, you're finding out things that you may not know about us. You're finding out that we are more nimble today, that social emotional learning is at the forefront of what we're doing. That differentiated instruction is critical to helping you tap into your potential. So follow us on social media. You'll see the things that you won't see otherwise if you're not paying attention. Okay, so the branded initiative is embedded in goal number five. So what we'll do going forward is create uh, a very convenient one-page document that summarizes, as you see here, the strategic goals going forward for the next three years. We will have this on the back of district calendars. You'll see the mounted in classrooms. Uh, things that go home, you'll have this on the back side of those pages. Quick reference, it's not a... a diatribe of pages in a binder on a shelf in my office. That's not what this strategic plan looks like. That's what it looks like. Those are the pillars, the benchmarks. It is nimble, and we're gonna build goals this year for year number one, and we'll be reaching out to some of the folks in this room to help us do that. As we begin the process of aligning the strategic goals by August 1st, we're gonna be developing what you've, you've probably heard before, our SMART goals. Those are goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Each year, for each of those five goals that I just listed, we will create SMART goals that will specifically address how we're going to advance that mission. Once we have those SMART goals developed, we will embed them on something that looks like this. Again, it's nimble, it's simple, it's one page. Here are the goals. And as to be determined, we will have the SMART goals for each year. We'll push them out, we'll right. e-blast them, push them out through social media. You'll follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Right, Pete? You're there, you're with me? All right. It'll be a big font, right? <laughs> it'll be a much, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the little, you know. <laughs> I thought it was just me. How much can you put on the font? will be legible, I okay. promise. Are you sure? And I'll leave you with this, a quote from John F. Kennedy. There are risks and costs to action, for sure but they are far less than the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. Thank you. Thank you very much.
very much. 22 minutes on the clock. Uh, that was a lot of excitement. Come on. The <laughs> Japan trip. You sure you don't want to stay? Like, you know, look what you're going to miss. You can't graduate. You can't go to college. I got to stay around for the smart goals. Um, I just want to thank everybody, and this really was a huge collective effort between the community and the students and the teachers and the administrators and Dr. Severins and the team, and especially um, Mr. Featherman for, uh, for persevering when we, we gave him this task a year ago and said, hey, why don't we do this? And, and you're like, hey, it's not really that easy. And so, uh, so, but no, I mean, and this is obviously the result of a year's worth of work, and it gives us direction. And, um, and I'm excited to kind of see how it progresses over the next three years. So. Thank you to everybody who was involved. And, and one of the things I wanted to point out, we had talked very at length about not doing a five-year plan because things change by the time you're executing all those things. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted to do a three-year plan and that maybe the norm used to be five years. And so five years is too long for us to, to execute something and also things change within that period of time where with three years you actually can I guess be more nimble yeah. mm -hmm. in that. Great. If it was five years, it'd be on a binder in the shelf. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Not to be utilized. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're gonna move on to the yes. this book of an agenda here. This is fantastic. All right. From the office of the business administrator and board secretary, under minutes, can I have a motion for B one through B six? So moved. Second. B1 is a motion to accept the resignation of Peter Pagulik, which last name I still can't get right after five years, from the Cedar Grove Board of Education, effective June 30th, 2019. B2 is a motion to approve the public and executive minutes of May 30th. B3 is a motion to approve the budgetary transfers for the month of May. B4 is a motion to approve the treasurer's report for the month of April. B5 is a motion to approve the board secretary report for the month of April. And B6 is a motion to approve the board secretary certification to the Cedar Grove Board of Education pursuant to the code. Any discussion? No, ma'am. I just want to say, obviously, B1 is, uh, is a little tough because um, uh, Pete is, is resigning effective uh, June 30th, which will be here, obviously, before we know it. Tomorrow. And yes. uh, yeah, now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we appreciate your efforts. And uh, I don't know if you want to say a couple words as to why. I just honestly, uh, it's becoming a little bit too much between work and this, and I want to thank uh, the Cedar Grove community, and obviously thank you guys for the last couple of years of the support, and uh, it was a great pleasure, and uh, you never know in the future. You never know, absolutely. Well, thank you. Well, thank yeah. you, guys. Thank, thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. I will abstain from B1 and yes to everything else. <laughs> As you wish. <laughs> Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Uh, under bills, can I have a motion for B7? So moved. Second. Uh, B7 is a motion to pay um, the following list of bills that are in our packet. Any discussion? No. No. All right, roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Give me a moment. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just do the next couple just on their own because there are lots of pages. Yeah. Under business, can I have a motion for B8? So moved. Second. B8 is a motion, a resolution prescribing the details and bond form thereof for 2,964,000 school bonds dated August 1st, 2019 of the Board of Education of the Township of Cedar Grove in the County of Essex, New Jersey. Any discussion? No, ma'am. No, ma Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Can I have a motion for B9? So moved. Second. Okay. Well, hold on. Yeah. I'm trying to get to the end of B9. B9 first. Yeah, I did. Yeah. B9 is really long. It is. Okay. B9 is a resolution authorizing the publication, printing, and distribution of a notice of sale and the publication of a summary notice of sale and prescribing the forms thereof for 2,964,000 school bonds dated August 1st, 2019, approving the preparation, distribution, and execution of a preliminary and a final official statement for such bonds undertaking to provide continuing disclosure 
of financial information covenanting to comply with the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, designating such bonds as qualified tax-exempt obligations for purposes of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, declaring the Board's official intent to reimburse itself for project costs with the proceeds of the bonds and authorizing various matters in connection with the electronic bidding for the bonds. Wow. wow. Any discussion? And I thought the speech Friday yeah. is going to be hard. <laughs> no, thank you. Wow. Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. All righty. Okay. Can I have a motion for uh, B10 through? Oh wow. So many Bs. <laughs> through B38. B38. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. B10 is a motion to approve the 2019-20 student transportation transportation services as listed below. B11 is a motion to approve the following scholarship award winners. B12 is a motion to approve joining the Union County Cooperative Pricing Agreement. B13 is a motion to approve the annual agreement with Genesis Educational Services for the 1920 school year. B14 is a motion to approve a here at consultants to provide the following for the 1920 school year. B15 is a motion to approve NAETI to provide environmental consultant professional services for the 1920 school year. B16 is a motion to approve Landy, I'm sorry, Handy Lift Service Company um, for the 1920 school year. B17 is a motion to approve the New Jersey Wild Geese Control for the 1920 school year. B18 is a motion to approve the K12USA.com for the 1920 school year. B19 is a motion to approve Strauss SMA Associates LLP School Policy and Regulations Consultants Annual Contracted support agreement for the 1920 school year. B20 is a motion to approve the 1920 para, I'm sorry, professional service contract with Vanguard Medical Group in the amount listed. B21 is a motion to approve dial pest control for the 1920 school year. B22 is a motion to approve Bollinger specialty group to offer voluntary student coverage for the 1920 school year. B23 is a motion to approve the 1920 annual service agreement with Frontline Technologies Group, LLC. B24 is a motion to approve the annual contract support agreement with Computer Solutions, Inc. for the 1920 school year. B25 is a motion to approve Phoenix Advisors for the 1920 school year. B26 is a motion to approve the following tax shelter annuity companies for the 1920 school year. B27 is a motion to adopt the uniform minimum chart of accounts. B28 is a motion to authorize the business administrator slash board secretary to release warrants. B29 is a, a motion to approve the Cedar Grove Board of Education in compliance with the code um, and acknowledges the following language on student records in policy 8330. B30 is a motion to approve the curriculum and textbooks for the 1920 school year. I don't need B31. Um, the Cedar Grove Board of Education wishes to transfer unanticipated excess current year revenue or unexpended appropriations from the general fund into a capital reserve account at year end. B32 is the Cedar Grove Board of Education wishes to transfer unanticipated excess current year revenue or unexpended appropriations from the general fund into a maintenance reserve account. B33, pursuant to PL 2015 Chapter 47, the Cedar Grove Board of Education intends to renew, award, or permit to expire the following contracts previously awarded by the Board of Education, as listed. B34 is a motion to approve Honeywell Building system and Systems and Services for the 1920 school year. B35 is a motion to approve Hague Service Corporation for the 1920 school year. B36 is a motion to approve SSP Video LLC's proposal to film 12 Cedar Grove High School football games at a cost not to exceed $1,680. B37 is a motion to approve the location agreement with MSSNGPECES and the Cedar Grove missing pieces. Uh, missing pieces. Oh, I get it. Ha ha. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Got it. B38. Here's a motion to approve the contracted non-public uh, 192, 193 IDEA basic services for the 1920 school year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Any discussion? That's a lot. 
Are you kidding me? Missing pieces. That's really funny. I like it that. Is. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. From the office of the superintendent of schools. Oh, no presentation today, huh? I just keep on going. Great. <laughs> Under personnel, can I have a motion for S1? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Through. S, wait. Thirty-one. Thirty-four or no? Thirty-three. <laughs> no. 30 S thirty-three. So moved. Second. There's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. Wow. All righty. S one is a motion to approve renaming the Cedar Grove High School kitchen as Maria's Kitchen in honor of Maria Spina, um, who we saw this evening. Yes. Uh, S two is a motion to verify accomplishment of two qualitative merit goals and three quantitative merit goals in accordance. Uh, with the code set forth in the employment contract for Mr. Michael Featherman, Superintendent of Schools, for the 1819 school year. Uh, S3 is a motion to approve Jessica Dimler, North End School Teacher, at the rate listed. S4 is a motion to approve Catherine Cawley, North End School Teacher, at the rate listed. S5 is a motion to approve Kat Katrina Shabab, High School Guidance Counselor, at the rate listed. S6 is a motion to accept the resignation of the Diana Sandoval, high school Spanish teacher. S7 is a motion to accept the resignation of Alicia Angione, high school social studies teacher. S8 is a motion to rescind Alicia Angione's SLE coordinator and rescind volleyball head coach. S9 is a motion to approve Jessica Shoemaker, head volleyball coach. S10 is a motion to accept the resignation of Christopher Faley. S11 is a motion to rescind the non-tenured salary approved on the May 23rd Board of Ed agenda for Joanne Marriott. S12 is a motion to retroactively approve Jack Mondesini, Structured Learning Experience Work Study Instructor. S13 is a motion to approve the resignation of Vincent Cardiello, high school technology teacher. S14 is a motion to accept the resignation of Caitlin Riley, high school English teacher. S15 is a motion to approve Michael Van Brunt, high school resource teacher. S16 is a motion to retroactively approve Melissa Hill, stage crew director. S17 is a motion to approve the extra class stipend for the 1920 school year at the rate listed for the following teachers. S18 is a motion to approve the following Memorial Middle School Summer 2019 music program salaries. S19 is a motion to approve the summer custodian hourly wage to meet the statewide wage increase. S20 is a motion to approve the following staff for summer custodial maintenance work. S21 is a motion to approve the tenure for the following certified professionals. S22 is a motion to uh, retroactively approve Alexander Castillo for after school supplemental instruction. S23 is a motion to approve the following as school volunteers. S24 is a motion to reemploy and set the salaries for the following Cedar Grove Public School administrators for the 1920 school year. S25 is a motion to approve Robin Kelly to process fall student athlete medical forms during the summer of 2019. S26 is a motion to approve the following personnel for the summer 2019 extended school year program. S27 is a motion to approve the following stipend positions according to the new agreement for the 1920 school year. S28 is somewhere. S28 is a motion to reimburse the following school based volunteers. S29 is a motion to approve the following winter coaches for the 1920 school year. S30 is a motion to approve the following paraprofessionals at the rate listed for the 1920 school year. S31 is a motion to authorize attendance at the following events. S32 is a motion to approve the following leave of absence. And S33 is a motion to approve the following students for classroom observations. Any discussion? No. no. Oh, Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under contracts, can I have a motion for S34? So moved. Second. S34 is a motion to approve the following contracts for special education students as recommended by the Director of Special Services for the 1920 school year. Any discussion? No. 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 
Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. I'm abstaining from S34. Mrs. Dye. Yes. The meeting is open to the public for comment on items on or off the agenda. She beat you to it. You got to wait. Nope. Sorry, Mr. Green. <laughs> Dina Scanlon. I've watched every I'm sorry, you just ha sorry to interrupt, you just have to say your address too. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Dina Scanlon, 32 Bruce Court. Thank you. Sure. I've watched every moment of the high school girls basketball program for the past eight years, and I'm so proud of the program that Coach Scanlon has built. His program is based on respect and integrity. Coach Scanlon has given almost every waking moment of his time to this program and so much more than basketball to this school and town. He was Elise Fearon's right-hand man in getting Hoops for Hope up and running, and the charity event continues today. He has found summer and permanent jobs for countless students, girls and boys, babysitting various positions at Bradford Bath and Tennis, caddying at a local golf club, and he's been a constant source of candidates for the recreation director. He watches girls at the sixth to eighth grade level so the girls have exposure to the program prior to getting there. He donated a piano to the music department. He has written numerous letters of recommendation for his players, sometimes on a day's notice, and he never said no to their request. He co-founded, along with three other people, a scholarship fund that has awarded over $75,000 to graduating seniors in Cedar Grove just a few weeks ago. Now, this all goes away. Who suffers? The students. Mr. Featherman just said a few minutes ago, it's not about us, it's about the students. And now they've lost a leader and a mentor, someone who took interest in them on and off the court. You had so much good right in front of you and you didn't even know it. The past six months have been a travesty. You let a parent run roughshod over you. You made decisions out of fear, and fear does not lead to prudent decisions. You were fiscally irresponsible to the taxpayers of Cedar Grove, shelling out $30,000 on an investigation of a complaint that had no merit from the start, and the findings by the law firm concluded that the complaints were not substantiated. I understand you're not paid for your position, but you still have hard decisions to make, and you have a fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers of this town. You didn't either. Shame on all of you. The only person who's been harassed is Coach Scanlon. You capitulated to the parent at every turn. Again, shame on you. As one parent said to Mr. Scanlon, this is disgusting. Another parent said, they will never find another coach like him, and you won't. You can try to control the narrative on this all you want. In our heart of hearts, we know this is about playing time, and so do you. If you want something in life, you have to work for it. You have to earn it. The message you have sent to parents and students is reprehensible. say before the next person comes up that because this is a personnel matter no one on the board can make a comment even though we may want to we can't so everyone is welcome to come and make their comments but the board will not be responding to any of them other than to say thank you for coming up and thank you mrs scanlon for coming up mr green um it was news to me, I'm sorry, John Green, 52 Howard Drive. Uh, news to me just from the get-go that $30,000 was spent on investigation. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna state that I know who the party was that created this problem, um, but 
I'm not quite sure if they feel proud of themselves uh, for that expenditure. Um, I learned very recently that a man I admire greatly and hold in the highest respect was being unfairly and unceremoniously dismissed from his long-standing position as our high school girls varsity basketball coach. Initially, I was stricken, like I believe the majority of the parents in this room were, with strong feelings of shock and dismay. How could a coach of his caliber, who has expended incalculable amounts of time and energy in imparting to and instilling deeply in the minds of every young lady in his care the most valuable and most desirable character traits of our human race, traits like sportsmanship, fair play, teamwork, leadership, accountability, and sacrifice. These are the quality character seeds his coaching has sown in the furrows of our girls' minds. There, they have taken firm root and gently grown. How do I know this? Because I've seen the positive changes in the individual players on the team. Where there was doubt, there's now certainty. Where there was fear, there's now boldness. Where there was selfishness, there's now altruism. Where there was egoism, there's now selflessness. Under his direction, they are a true team. Under his care, they have become not only better athletes and students, but better, more confident, and vital human beings. In my mind, his impactful and positive influence on our daughters is undeniable and profoundly evident. Um, just to quickly go off on a tangent, there is an article uh, that you all should read, especially the board. Uh, it's entitled, High School Coaching Conundrum. It is too easy for parents to get you fired. Coaches wonder about, a jobs, about job security in an era when successful peers are let go. There are, it re, goes on to read, there are a number of reasons coaches are let go. Uh, but there is only one that has many coaches feeling as if the ice beneath them is thinner than ever before. The ice being parents. Parents upset that their kid does not play enough. Parents angered that the coach is too demanding. Parents concerned that the coach is out of touch with his era. This whole catchphrase that schools seem to be using right now, or moving in a different direction, uh, I can't imagine what that direction is going to be. Is it to placate parents? Is it to placate kids who don't think that they're getting enough time on the court? I don't know. There's, there is a whole entitled generation of kids and parents that have come out and don't understand the value of hard work and what the real world expects of them. I could move on with this article um, that moves on into a excerpt from Forbes about why um, the board uh, or administrators have made this decision. Um, but uh, I don't want to get into that because I don't believe basically that may be the reason because it would be way too egregious of a reason if that is the case. Fear um, and um, raising money in the future through, through taxes, et cetera. I'd like to just state that there was a doctor up here giving a presentation and they surveyed a population. They aggregated the data. They created histograms that we all saw. They came to a determination uh, about decision making for future success. Um, and that all came from surveying a population. There was no survey of the population of athletes uh, that were under um, the auspices of Bill Scanlon, um, and which is, I don't understand how that could have happened. So yes, I heard um, uh, Dr. Schiller, if I'm not pronouncing your name, Simmons, Simmers. I apologize, well, she's gone, so, oh no, you're still here? It doesn't matter. Um, but they spent money for a pretty extensive study, and um, from that, um, they, she spoke about clients in any school is the student body. Consult with them. Uh, Mrs. Scanlon talked about uh, the voices of the students being the most to us uh, from someone on the board. It's not about us, it's about you. And that was an address to the students this evening. The third goal um, being pursued after the expensive survey that we, we just went through by the school district is retaining the best people. Obviously, unless things change this evening, that is not going to be the case. So in summation, my family wishes not to let such a man of strength and caring disappear from our daughter's life and urges the administrators who have fallen victim 
To the false pleas of a grievance-prone, grudge-bearing people who mistakenly believe their ambition has been thwarted, to put an end to this injustice and rehire Bill Scanlon back as our daughter's head basketball coach immediately. How dare the few be allowed to destroy the many? Lena Green, 52 Haller Drive. I'd just like to say thank you for allowing me to speak. This is um, a great opportunity to express myself with how I feel about someone with who we look up to and you know highly respect. To all that are here today, it is with great pleasure and honor that I speak to speak on behalf of this wonderful man, Bill Scanlon. Since my husband and I met Bill. He has been nothing but transparent, respectful, and very, very honest. That speaks volumes and about anyone's character. We already liked him before we even got to know him. And that was the beginning of a true relationship with someone who was about to play a major role in our daughter's life. Of course, in any relationship, loyalty and praise should always be earned. So we still needed to get to know Bill. Without getting long-winded, Bill, from the very beginning and to this present date, his true character always stayed the same. 100% always transparent, present as a coach, and sometimes he had to be a little tough in order to bring out the very best of what the girls had to offer in the, in the court. Bill was passionate, respectful, and he, he was all, <laughs> He also would check in on them to make sure that they were, they were doing okay. He spent a lot of his time not just being a basketball coach, but he also would show up to their uh, other sport events and give them nothing but praise and support. Dina, his beautiful wife, I would thank any chance that I could get, right by his side all of the time and always coming to every game cheering on the girls with nothing but love and praise. We truly felt so lucky and blessed to have had him for these past two years for our girl and for the rest of the girls. We as parents all, we as parents all take such great pride in loving our children so much, but we as parents also need to be very careful with how far we are willing to take that love. Our relationships with Bill has been nothing but respectful and professional. He has never shown any favoritism nor, nor disrespect to us, our daughter, ever. I write this letter with no hesitation in defense of Bill Scanlon's character, not because I have to, but because he earned it. Right is right and wrong is wrong, no matter how one wants to code it. Bill Scanlon did not deserve this type of farewell. And from us to you, Bill, we are forever very appreciative and thankful. And if the board can change its mind, that would be a blessing in disguise. Thank you. Hi, uh, Christine Corso, 37 Bruce Court. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I'd like to congratulate our softball and lacrosse teams on their hard work. <clears throat> I'm here to speak as a parent. Our family's been involved with the Cedar Grove School District since September 3rd, 2003, when our daughter started kindergarten here at North End. And our son will graduate this Friday. I'm here to speak as a volunteer I've happily served different organizations, with many of you, <laughs> that work to provide opportunities for students and support for our teachers. And I'm here to speak as an administrator. I have worked in both business and education, and I have a master's degree in higher education administration. What I have learned in over 15 years in this district is that your treasure is the educators who truly challenge their students 
those who ask much of them and then support them and give them the tools to accomplish the things they didn't know they could do. These are the teachers and coaches and counselors who are preparing our students to succeed in life by helping them see that being part of a team is as important as winning the game. That school is about learning how to learn and learning who you are and learning what's important. Your treasure is the Jessens, the Creels, the Kanopkas, the DeFabiuses, the Par I see you smiling. You have those teachers. The Parazones, the LaSalles, the DeStefanos, the Cardinals, the Costers, so many more. These treasure treasures don't just teach the subject, they feed the student as a person. And when you support them, you support your students, your families, and you make Cedar Grove a district to be proud of. I urge you to develop policies that support and protect this treasure. I think Dr. Severs and Mr. Featherman, this is goal number three of your strategic plan, as Mr. Green pointed out. When I served on the HIB committee at MMS, which I did for many years, I worked with another treasurer, Erica Sloda. We took very seriously the imperative to protect students from bullying. <clears throat> we gave equal weight to supporting all students so that they wouldn't consider themselves victims when bullying was not the issue. We looked for creative ways to have students feel included and recognized. I believe our district loses a treasure if we let Bill Scanlon go. Students and their families lose the opportunity to have them challenge and mentor their children. Because there was not a policy in place, you were intimidated into making a rash decision. You chose to have lawyers investigate a complaint that should not have come before your board. Tens of thousands of dollars later, those lawyers found that the charges were completely unwarranted. I urge you to empower yourselves so that the next time you're not bullied into spending taxpayer money because of a complaint that the student didn't get a role, that the student didn't get a higher test grade or that didn't get the time on the field or the court. Our family has had an exceptional experience in the Cedar Grove School District because of what our staff, our treasure, has demanded and challenged them to accomplish. I urge you to serve all the students and families of our town by supporting those individuals who strive to make them better and standing up for what is right. We made this quote, okay? There are risks and costs to action. Make an investment in supporting and educating your administrators so that they can make the call when appropriate. Put a policy in place so that the squeaky wheel does not force the train off the tracks. I urge you to consider where your treasure lies and to develop policies that support and protect it. Lisa here on um, 87 Union Street. So first I want to thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, like I said earlier, my name is Lise Fearon and I am a former Cedar Grove girls basketball team member. I'm speaking on behalf of the alumni for Bill Scanlon, or Scans as we like to call him. Scans has been my coach since freshman year of high school, but I've had the privilege of being coached by him since middle school at some of the basketball camps as well as summer workouts. His love and passion for basketball is contagious, and his commitment to all his players does not and should never go unnoticed. It truly angers me and breaks my heart to hear that he will not be coaching from the sidelines this season. The eight years that he dedicated to Cedar Grove girls basketball and the town should never be belittled. Maybe my words mean nothing to you, but I know from firsthand experience the amazing person he is and how he impacted my life for the better on the court and off. 
As many of you know, I experienced a tragedy during basketball season of my senior year. Um, my father had passed away in late December of 2016, and it was the worst time of my life. Um, throughout the season, Scans had always checked up on me and made sure I was okay. Whenever I was having a bad day, he let me have it and never questioned it. He had the team, sorry. He had the team send gifts and flowers to my house. He let me use basketball. He helped me and let me use basketball as a way to support a great cause so dear to me, which is called Hoops for Hope that still goes on today. He allowed me to use basketball as my escape from my reality, and I'll always be grateful for that. I know I was able to reach out to him at any time of the day, and at any point of the year if I needed anything. He truly is an amazing man, and I will protect his name and will not let it be shattered by people who do not know his true character. It was an honor and a privilege to be coached by Scans for the four years of high school, and I wish the girls now would and could experience the same because there is not a man who loves basketball more than Bill Scanlon. Cedar Grove High School will truly suffer the loss of not only a great coach, but a great person. Thank you. Wishing to speak? All right. Um, close that portion of the meeting. Uh, announcement of future meetings. We have one next week because we just can't get enough of seeing each other. June 26th, North End, same place, same time, and then and then we're going to go almost a month without seeing each other. Uh, July 23rd, North End, same time, same place. Um, I guess this is the last one of the school year. Next week's What? I don't remember next this week's It is, because we, since you're not resigning until the 30th, no. <laughs> we wanted to throw <laughs> so one more in there. there for you. Uh, anyway, I just want to take a moment to uh, to thank my fellow board members for a, uh, a fun, exciting, and yeah. always dramatic year. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and to thank again, Mr. Slendoria. It's been, uh, it's been great serving with you for the past year. We wish you a lot of luck in the future and uh graduation this week yes Yay. Yay. Where mr featherman has promised us it will not rain no <laughs> <laughs> everybody's counting on yeah. you <laughs> all right can i have a motion to adjourn so, so moved, moved. Second. <laughs> second roll call please mrs dichiara yes mrs miga yes mr pravulovich Yes, sir. Mr. Schoner? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. This meeting is over. Have a good evening.